This is what I got for the crane with an inductor at its base. We can see that fortunately, adding the inductor decreased the current from what it was for the ungrounded crane, shown in blue. So fairly rapidly, we were able to use FDTD to develop a solution for the construction company. Now we just need to implement it. How do you think we should add an inductor at the base of the crane? Well, an inductor is basically just a coil of wi wire. You've probably worked with very small inductors before. Here we could build a much larger inductor with a long cable. Now you may be interested to know that the study that we just conducted actually occurred in real life. Some consultants were hired to solve the EMI problem for a construction company in Brazil, and they used FTTD to develop a solution just as we did. In their case, they simulated a pulse instead of a sinusoid so that they could take the DFT and get the spectrum, or the behavior of the current over a range of frequencies. Here's a plot they obtained for two different capacitance values, the same values that we tried. The dashed line is the result for the ungrounded crane. You can see that adding either a capacitor with 10 microfarads or a capacitor with 1 nanofarad, that it, the capacitor made things worse, just as we saw in our simulations. Then they tried an inductor just as we did, and they also found, just as we did, that adding an inductor reduced the current on the crane. But it depends on the frequency of operation, as you can see in this plot. Now the inductance values, 0.1 millihenry and 0.12 millihenries, they used are different from the one that we ended up using in our simulation. Before giving you a value of 50 microhenries, to try in your simulation. I ran a few different simulations and found that 50 microhenries would give the most promising looking results. I'm guessing we needed a different inductance value in our simulation because there are some notable differences between our simulation and their simulation. For example, they modeled an actual, the actual ground parameters, parameters rather than just assuming the ground was a PEC as we did. Also, they ran at a much higher grid resolution, which allowed them to model the near field physics of the crane more closely. Finally, here is a picture of the inductor that they implemented at the base of the crane. They took 85 meters of cable with a cross-sectional area of 2.5 millimeters squared and wound it around the hydraulic jack of the crane. The hydraulic jack, which is made of steel, acted as the ferrite core of the inductor. So, now are we done? We solved the EMI problems for the crane, right? Well, we won't run any more simulations in this lecture, but for the consultants at this point, their job was not over. They had to consider something else. Can you think of any other way that an electromagnetic wave might couple to a crane?